My name is Hyun Lelihoi. I am senior research immunologist in the laboratory of animal bioscience and biotechnology at the Belchville Agricultural Research Center of the United States Department of Agricultural Research Service located in Belchville, Maryland. Today, uh, the talk I'm going to give uh, is on coccidiosis in poultry, and the title is Role of Gut Health and Novel Antibiotic Alternatives. And this will be given as part of CJ Tech Talk series. As we all know, the human population is expected to grow to 9.5 billion by 2050. And with the population growth, we anticipate increased demand for meat supply. And I think poultry is one of the uh, most easily prepared meat for human consumption, followed by beef and pork and turkey. And we also know based on the last 10 years statistic that chicken meat production will continue to increase. And with that, today's talk, I'm going to discuss how we're going to uh, continue to produce increasing uh, number of uh, chickens in the absence of antibiotic poultry feed market because we anticipate that all antibiotic alternative will be added as feed additive. So major highlights of my talk, I will talk about gut health, which is related to coccidiosis, uh, some aspects of antibiotic alternatives, and then uh, talk about some of the novel ways to mitigate coccidiosis and some of the method that we have developed in our laboratory. Coccidiosis, economic costs more than $13 billion. It's important not only because it's very complex infection that's very costly to poultry industry, but also it is one of the uh, factors that cuts the chronic enteritis, which costs more than $6 billion. So these two diseases have remained as a top priority diseases of the United States uh, American Association of Avian Pathologists and U.S. Poultry. And this will continue to be one of the major enteric pathogens that we will try to develop a novel ways to control in the absence of antibiotics. As we all know, uh, coccidiosis is one of the major negative effect on poultry interference with the growth. The growth performance is very important, but there are other major symptoms associated with coccidiosis. The uh, diarrhea, sometimes with Imeria chinella, it will be bloody. The depression and reduced weight gain and feed poor growth performance. And it can also result in high mortality dependent on the species uh, of uh, Imeria. As you can see from the diagram below, there are at least seven different Imeria species that can be distinguished by the molecular markers. All of them, however, have very complex life cycle that's made of uh, sexual and asexual stages. And this is the sexual stage of development in the intestine that will cause mostly the damage that uh, negative effect on gross performance. So developing vaccines has been very complicated because the multi-stage and as well as multi-strain and that there are many uh, compounding factors that really make it difficult to make a recombinant vaccine, although the live or uh, attenuated vaccines have been widely used uh, in the absence of uh, other alternative methods. Toxidiosis impact uh, gut health, and it's very important that we understand the relationship between these kind of infections and how it impacts gut health. And there's been increasing number of papers, as you can see from the PubMed papers. Uh, there's an increasing interest by uh, people who study infectious diseases, especially uh, in animals, because gut health referred to the physical state, physiological function of gastrointestinal tract does impact gut health and performance. So we really need to understand the relationship between uh, gut health and many of these infectious diseases caused by parasite, virus, or bacteria. And there are many factors that affect chicken as well as human gut health. There's some intrinsic factors such as genetics, sex, and age, but there's some other external factors 
uh, depends on what we feed to these birds. Their environment, of course, the crowding is a factor for poultry. And one of the important factors that we understand about their uh, gut health effect is that there is a gut-brain axis. We refer to uh, this bidirectional communication system through 100 million nerves existing in the gut. And the vagus nervous system uh, transmits the stress response to the gut, and that will also affect their behavior, their uh, gross performance. I think the review that we have published last year is a comprehensive review that consider microbiota and other infectious disease effect on immune response and gut physiology. So I just put a reference here for people to read. When you talk about the gut health infections such as coccidiosis, I think intestinal barrier function is most critical to consider because in the intestine, there are microbial barrier, chemical barrier, physical barrier, and immunological barrier. In fact, uh, gut-associated lymphoid tissue is one of the largest lymphoid tissue residing in the gut. And when you have an infection, you really engage all this aspect, microorganism, immune system, and other chemicals in the mucosal layer. So you're really affecting the entire gut system, which can impact the growth of animals. Another important aspect of gut is that it is the largest lymphoid organ in the body. And with coccidiosis, most of the host response will occur in the gut. So we have to study innate immune response and adaptive immune response to Imeria parasite. As in mammals, chickens also respond immediately to the offending pathogen, and we call that immediate innate immune response, and that involves the uh, first line of immune defense. But I think the adaptive immune response, which we associate with memory response and the vaccine response, we know the complexity of adaptive immune response to Imeria in, uh, in chickens, and we need to better understand underlying adaptive immune response if we want to develop vaccines, whether it's recombinant vaccines or, or animal, uh, parasite vaccines. Another inherent difference between mammals and chickens is that the immune system is not exactly the same. In fact, most of the molecules that uh, immune cells associated with in chickens are not same as in mammals. Our laboratory developed numerous reagent chicken immune system that has been commercialized. And basically chicken does have thymus and bursa, primary T and B cell, but it also has other uh, structures that are different. Uh, chickens do not have the lymph node. They do have lymphoid aggregates. They have different antibody class, but much less complex. They do have T cell receptors mediate similar function, and they do have many toll-like receptors. Understanding this fundamental difference between the mammals and chickens, we were studying the nature of host immune response in coccidiosis for the last 40 years. Initially, we want to know what will be the difference between the global transcription response between primary and secondary. And then another aspect of the study was looking at different Imeria uh, species and both uh, published, and I gave you reference here, use the uh, intestinal microarray and look at different Imeria species. And basically the results definitely showed that clear difference between innate and adaptive immune response, primary or secondary immune response, that engage different set of genes. This is published, so you can cite it uh, and refer it. For example, in the secondary response, transcription and translation and transport. So by understanding the difference between not only the primary and secondary response, but also uh, the difference between different Imeria species, different areas of the gut, different kind of immune response profile and understanding what kind of immune response they engender at different areas of the gut is important. 
In general, when you look at different type of immune response, uh, most important the balance of Th17, which is a pro-inflammatory uh, response, and T regulatory controlled pro-inflammatory response. The balance between them is really important if we're going to develop uh, some uh, immune uh, therapeutics or vaccines or immuno uh, antibody alternative. And there are antibi antibodies that we can measure both regulatory and TH17 response in chickens now that our laboratory have developed and commercialized. So coccidiosis, as I mentioned, is a very costly infection. Uh, there are many uh, uh, challenges in enteric coccidiosis, and we have been involved in developing antibiotic alternatives that mitigate these two infections. But just to name what these alternatives that worked really well is hyperimmune antibodies, probiotics, and some of the host defensive peptide work really well. Uh, and, and we are now currently also engaged in developing recombinant vaccines, some candidate vaccine antigens to develop uh, molecular vaccine. When you look at the, uh, since 2009, relate to antibiotic alternative, you can see that there's been a significant increase in number of publications. If you look at different categories of this alternative, uh, probiotics represent 30%, which is most of uh, alternative, but there are some other ones that I'm going to spend some time to talk about, phytogenics, phytochemicals becoming very important as we understand their function. And in our most recent review on coccidiosis published in vaccine, we discuss all of this um, and, and then discuss what is most critical when we use different uh, antimicrobial um, alternative because we need to understand the mechanism. We need to understand uh, in most cases, the doses and uh, how to apply this in chicken diet. Uh, we also many recombinant vaccine antigens to develop a recombinant vaccine. And this has been a really challenge. And I think that this review discusses many of the challenges that we have. Other area that we've been very successful is identify uh, host-derived chicken peptide that directly uh, damage uh, coccidia. As you can see in this paper that we published in scientific report, host-derived peptide we call lysine can directly damage uh, coccidia. Uh, this has been one of the successful ways that we can deliver uh, chicken naturally produce lysine, and we can put it in a bacteria such as bacillus uh, it's more recent work that we described that when we give bacillus uh, subtilis spores that carry these NK genes that we can really mitigate the infection. Uh, this is another paper that we can also chicken interleukins in, in uh, collaboration with NK lysine peptide and reduce the osis production as well as to uh, mitigate the negative effect. Uh, so uh, one of the ways that we are trying to pursue, commercialize, is how we can force that carry NK2 peptide feed or pellet and deliver to young chickens. For the remaining time, I would like to talk about phytochemicals. Uh, phytochemicals is a protective chemical that has evolved to protect plants against insects and pathogens. And there are more than 10,000 phytochemicals in our food supply. Most important one is polyphenol, and I believe that uh, the many, many functions associated with different phytochemicals, so I'm not going to go through all of them. One of the important uh, functions is that they affect innate as well as adaptive immune response. Some of them can be directly uh, cytotoxic to pathogens, and they can uh, also do a epigenic regulation. They actually have very amazing properties, uh, some of these phytochemicals interact with receptors. On the enteral endonuclear cells release many of these messengers that has beneficial effect. Our laboratory uh, has developed uh, several cell lines based that can screen many phytochemicals, macrophage, 
muscle cells. And we can assess a function or aspect such as cytokine production. And uh, by using this kind of technology, we screen more than 28 different phytochemicals uh, that we published in Frontier in Immunology last year. In this particular paper, we discuss a combination of cinnamon oil, green tea, and pomegranate mixed and fed to chickens can have many beneficial effects, not only to improve their body weights, uh, reduce the, uh, the uh, damage, and reduce inflammatory response. Look at some of this combination of phytochemicals that will mitigate coccidiosis as well as necrotic arteritis. Finally, I would like to thank all the people who's been supporting our work. Uh, we have worked with many different companies and we have many visiting scientists from many different parts of the world who have contributed to our work. We have also training summer students from their high school so that we'll have more uh, trained scientists that can work in uh, poultry health field. Thank you.